I believe it was here. I need to see the doctor. X, Y, Z. You know, this this claim. So I'm here. You know, whatever. So just start. Just start an email to yourself right now before it's before it's that maybe the hundred and eighty day window. Because when it's time to go, and you're like, oh, no, I'm not, I, I'm not in pain. I'm fine. You know, and you'll have forgotten the things that happen. You know, and I'm not trying to say you kind of milk the government for a, for compensation if you don't want it. I'm just saying. You need to make sure that you're paying for your share. The abuse that you put up with, I mean, other people get workers' compensation, other people get, you know, things, and, and you don't. So, um, I, uh, I severed my ACL and work camp. I didn't realize it until two years ago. I just had another big cap on my mom. I didn't realize it until about two years ago when they started trying to force me to, to, to recognize that, that this one ever happened. But because I didn't have any record of it, because I hadn't gone through it, I didn't know exactly what, you know, what that situation was. And, you know, I went to the doctor, I went to the aid station, I went to the aid station, I went to the aid station, but I'm fighting with them, I'll probably have to do an appeal because they're saying, well, that could happen anywhere, in time, and whatever. So, so the more you can document now, the more you have to put it in, and like I said, my first time, so suddenly I go, okay, well, you know, what are you going to put in a claim for? When it's I think we're ready, Diane. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I work at the UGA in the call center, which is an amazing experience. Yeah, a great, a great opportunity. A lot of those people have um, our veterans as well. So. Okay. Oh, so it looks like you guys are like way over there. Did we connect with Onisha? I don't know. Okay. I don't see anybody Do on there. Link? Do you have a Zoom link? And can yeah, the Zoom link is up. Can you ever see her if I can you send the Zoom link to Onisha? Um, Yami knows how to do that. Okay. So just don't do it on mine, please. Okay. All right. Go ask Yami. I, okay, do you have the CRM? What's that? Do you have... The CRM. Oh, our CRM. No, I don't have it up. Okay, I will. What's that? Okay. Do you want me to get that right now? Yeah. Okay, it's hang it's on. Right? Yeah. Sorry, I lied. One more thing. It's got somebody wants to, that's overseas that needs to get the link. So. So, Nisha in, our, in the CRM, and I don't have her direct information. Changes. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could. <laughs> so you said you've used the veterans loans benefit before, right? Yeah. Okay. And how soon are you hoping to buy? Oh, I already bought a house. You already bought oh, a house. Yeah. Got it. This is just informational for future. Yeah. Got it. You you're the same. I haven't bought a house yet. You haven't bought a house yet. Okay. All right. And you said you've never used your I loan benefits. No, I haven't. Okay. I want to plan on it. So I yes. Okay. I'm planning on wanting to try to use it in. So. Okay. Do you know where you're going or when? It's supposed to be going back to Bragg. Okay. No, I'm not going to Got it. Okay. I'm trying to go through selection and all that first, and then that's what I get started. If not, then I'll feed that right back here. It's still stuck here at Hood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and how long have you been at Hood? I've been, actually, it's my second time here. I'm, I'm glad since this time, I've only been here about a year now. Got it. You don't know how soon. I know you can put in for transfer after a year. Is that what it is? You can, once you've got a year, you can put in for transfer? Well, just you now it's like more like three years, so you'll be on like the try to keep your views for three years. But I'm trying to push forces, so once I have been to selection, hopefully I get selected to the number two from course and all that. You might be a okay. So we'll see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, Diane, here's yeah. the. Okay, we got the room. Um, yeah. Just okay. Oh, you just yeah. email this to her? <laughs> yeah, just send it to her in the CRM. Let me grab more room. I was there for four years. Well, my wife's from Georgia, not from Alabama, so. Uh, 
have it. I got my pizza, huh? I did. Just didn't know we had, didn't know how many people were going to walk through the door on us, and I always want to be prepared. Pizza, yeah. pizza freezes. <laughs> so we need some yellow somewhere. Good so. thing is it freezes and you can only watch any time. Pardon? I said I would have come just for the pizza. Yeah. Go home with a whole pie tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Be a cozy little group. You can sit down with us if you want. I'll be kind of. Dang, you're standing in front of the camera. Thank you. All right, well, um, I am Eric Martineau, this is my wife Diane, and Jose is the broker here. Um, assuming I can get this to work. There we go. I um, don't know if you guys know this, but uh, Jose is your mayor here in Killeen. Um I guess for at least a couple more weeks. When does the election take place? Uh, well, I'm actually stepping down in about a week. Okay. And running for city council. Um, Jose has been, it was 10 years in the military and then uh, 28 years as a realtor. His wife Laura has 18 years and they specialize in helping veterans uh, with houses. And he's also been the president of the Fort Hood Area Association of Realtors and the Texas Association of Realtors on the executive board. So I'll hand this to Jose to go over some stuff that, that deals with, uh, it's not in there. With uh, real estate, and then Diane and I. on the right. Yep. Yep. All right. So first off, I just want to say welcome. This is actually our first one we're going here. We've done these before, uh, years past, but I think with COVID and everything, we're, everybody's trying to get back into it, and so we're hoping to do that again. And we're trying out different locations. I think we have like twenty something. Twenty. Yeah, twenty two. Signed up. So glad you committed. You're here. <laughs> like I say, even for the free pizza. And uh, take I one home. Know, I don't know. Uh, what are you guys looking to get out of it? You guys looking to buy or sell or? Uh, buy and sell. Buy and sell. Awesome. And you? I'm just looking for more information. Information. Yeah. For, to, well, you're in the right place because I like to educate. You know, a lot of things I do is just educating, whether you own a house or not, because I've been doing it for 28 years. And uh, I always tell, you know, people, best thing you can do in life is invest in a house. I've owned quite a few. I'm in the process of getting another one. And uh, to me, home buying, it's like having a bank. Because I, you know, I, I did 10 years in the military. And then after I did 10 years, I didn't have plenty to show for it. I was kind of broke. I don't know. Uh, it's like you graduate high school after you get out. And I couldn't even afford a house. And... Uh, few years later I ended up buying my house and uh, after that bought another one and slowly you start accumulating wealth. Uh, there, there's a, a slide, I didn't put it in here, but it shows that the average renter, their net worth is less than $4,000. A lot of times when I got out of the army, I think my, my net worth was like 10 cents. You know, that was it. The average homeowner his net worth, it's probably increased because of everything that, if you guys say you own a house? How long? Yeah, that's your dad, yeah. How long you own your house for? I just got it last year. Oh, well, one year, believe it. Right now in this market, you've already increased in the equity. We've never seen a market like it is now. And uh, you buy a house, it used to be you have to own it for three or four years just to break even. In one year, if you had to sell it right now, you would probably make money on it. That's how the crazy the market is. But I've always enjoyed real estate because of that fact. It's like putting money in the bank. And the more you can get, like what you guys are thinking, the better. Because it's just, you know, some of the houses that I had, I would rent them out. And I was losing money. I was losing a couple of hundred thousand, you know, a couple of hundred, couple, couple of thousand, a couple of hundred dollars a month. But over the long term, it pays out because one, I was losing like $200 every single month. But then when I ended up selling it, I made like sixty thousand dollars. So even at that, you know, you're always going to make money in real estate. So uh, there it is. Real estate is one of the time-honored inflation hedges. So as I say, you know, you don't have to worry about stocks or anything. I know real estate. I don't even have any stocks. I used to have them stocks, but 
Yeah, I like uh, seeing my my house there, and uh, you know you do have some some issues, some challenges with the house, but those are controllables. Those are up to you because uh, you're going to have to do some maintenance on it, some upkeep, and you just have to plan ahead. And uh, as it says, property values are still continuing to rise. And uh, in this area, just to kind of give you an idea, this used to be more of a buyer's area where we had a lot of inventory. Just in the city of Colleen, we had uh, close to a thousand homes for sale at any one given time. So there was a lot of options available. When you guys bought, did you guys have a hard time finding a house? Yeah, I was looking for like six, seven months. Yep. And that's still the problem. And so now our inventory went from a thousand. Last I looked, we do like monthly updates here. I think the last time was 120. So we're probably between 120 and less than 150 houses available in the market. And in the summer months, that even drops more because a lot of people are out there looking and they look at things like, uh, I'm not going to buy until what? What are things that people wait until summer to buy a house? Why? Why is that? Like, I'm waiting for the summer because my kids are out of school. And that's when you see a lot more buyers come into the market. And when the shortage of inventory that we had, you know, probably this summer your house is going to go even more higher because there's so many people wanting a house. And uh, a lot of times people look for things like that, you know, location to a, to a school, to shopping. And that's always been good in our area. And then here's appreciation. Here's the inflation rate. Look at the blue stands for what's happened right now. Inflation is an all-time high with everything that's going in the government. You know, you see what's happening to gas prices, yeah. food. I mean, you bought a gallon of milk recently. All that is inflation. But with all that said, when inflation goes up, home prices always even go higher than that. So if you're a homeowner, even though you're paying more for a gallon of milk, uh, and it's more expensive, guess what's happening to your house? It's going up too. If you're a renter and you're paying more, guess what happens to you? Your rent goes up. And I mean, you even are more broke because uh, homeowners, when they see that inflation is going up, guess what? I had a house, one of my houses, it went from $900 a month to $1,495 a month. As soon as the lease was up, we were able to put it at $1,495. Luckily, the tenant moved and so that's a $500 increase from one tenant to the other and you're going to continue to see that you know it, 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 it's because of inflation that goes up and yet my mortgage stays the same you know so it doesn't go up like a renter so that's one of the reasons why it's a great thing to do the cost uh, of maintenance goes up so it's so it's well as so the house gets older that's like yeah. i say upkeep you got to upkeep so all that money you make you got to put aside, you know, an upkeep because usually it's cosmetic, paint, flooring, you know, sometimes appliances. And uh, here's what happens to rent. This is Austin, and I don't know how old this is, but I think it's this a month, lot. I got this just is two it? days ago. I, I think it's a lot higher than that. This must be like outside Austin because you ever try? I looked at some of the rental prices oh. in near Austin. They're like five thousand bucks and up. Yeah, these are one bedroom condos, I say. Yeah. In, in... in Leander. I just yeah. did a CMA on a house in Leander. I used to own a house out there in Leander. And I sold it for 200000 This morning we got one. And it does an automatic. And it was like $1.2 million. I'm like, Leander? I should have stuck to that. I should have kept. I sold it for $200,000 wow. like five years ago. So, but yeah. Rentals keep going up. So whether you're buying to live or buying to invest, I mean, you guys, all of you guys here are young. So now is the perfect time, even if you're going somewhere else, because we have a lot of people, because we're a very transit community, that come in, buy a house, and then they go somewhere else, and they still have, you know, we have, you know, I don't own a company here, but there are companies like management companies, they do it all. You don't have to worry about it. A lot of people that are buying right now, a lot of the properties here, are people that do not live here in the area because uh, because they know that the rental is high here because of the transitory, you know, where our soldiers coming in and out. So it's a phenomenal place to invest. 
without having to, you know, high, high mortgage. Because with all that said and done, and they'll tell you about it, but with all that said and done, when it comes down to it, even though home prices are going up, one of the major things is that interest rates remain low. When I bought my first house, it was an 8% interest rate. And so it was like an $85,000 house. And I look at that and I say, you know, $85,000 house today at a 3 or 4% would probably be pretty much the same payment that I was doing, you know, 15, 20 years ago at 8%. So even though home prices have gone up, because the rate has remained down, you're paying pretty much the same. And so uh, that's another reason why you want to buy. <coughs> And then here it just kind of tells you what the rent and the percentage is from September, uh, what they're increasing by. It's 25%. And again, you know, you can see a lot of the prices up. But again, I think it's a lot higher than that. Uh, it is just insane. Yeah. Yeah. And then homeowners, I say, they're shielded from that because the, the, the rate that you get, as you guys know, it's a fixed rate. You want to get a fixed rate. Now you're Payment is going to be subject to change as home prices increase or taxes are going to go up. But your interest rate always stays the same for 30 years. So right now, the what they're going to try to do, the federal government to slow this market down because there's so many people buying, is they're going to try to raise interest rates. That's what the government does, try to slow the market down. And so you don't want to you know, wait too long and then your rates go up and now you're paying more for, for a mortgage for that. And then same thing here, that's about rate, uh, rent increases more than inflation here. Yeah, so, it's national. Yeah, yeah, this is a national one. And you can see the inflation rate is the blue line. The rental prices, look where they are, they're, they're out doing. And again, <laughs> home prices, are, as far as your mortgage stays the same, but when you're renting, you're renting higher. You, now you gotta pay more for that gallon of gas and a gallon of milk, and you gotta pay more for or rent, and that's one of that's one of the reasons also why we have such a tightening of homes because a lot of times people don't want to move because if they move, guess what? Their rent is going to be a lot higher, and so some of them they're getting rent increases when they terminate when their lease expires, but they're trying to fight so that they can extend it or or whatever. But but as soon as they move, it's going to be a lot higher. And there's the mortgage rates compared to the last five decades. Look at the 1980s. If you bought a $100,000 house in 1980, your mortgage payment, and today, that's 2010, because today I know it even dropped, there it is, three, three and a half. Your mortgage payment would be probably the less, you know, the same amount if you bought a $200,000 house. It would be the same as a $100,000 house you bought back in 1980. My sister's interest rate was... 17.4 and they were thrilled to get reduced to 13.2. Yeah, a lot of people, that was crazy. Oh my gosh. So that's it. I did my part. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Mine's is real estate. I love it here. It's a community that's growing. I know. How long have you guys been here? Four years. Four years? Were you military? Or? Yeah. Are you still in the military? No, no, I just got out. Oh, you still are you going to stay here? You don't want to? Where are you going? California. Oh. I know. <laughs> you're gonna, you, you, your plane going over there is empty. Everybody's coming this <laughs> <I know, I laughs> What part of California? Uh, Vesperia. No. The high desert. Okay. Who's that out? Give me another big city near it. Poor um, Irwin. Like two hours. Oh, yeah, two hours. Oh, okay. okay. I know, I, I yeah, know. I know, I know. You like it, that's where you grew up. It's just because my, my family. Yeah. Like, that's the trick. We do the opposite. Like me, I grew up in a big city. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people here are from a different, they move here, and then the family comes here. You know, I was like. I thought that, that's what was going to happen. You know? They don't want to move here. They all have their business, and they're, they're, they do good out here. So. That's, that's probably what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad. Right next to Fort Benning. Huh? <laughs> That's good. And where are you from? Oh, uh, I'm from Pennsylvania, but Pennsylvania. yeah, I'm moving here. Got it. Okay, so so you're a team now. I didn't want to discount. I didn't want to discount one or the other. You know. Yeah. 
Cool. You're, and you said you're getting out here shortly. Yeah. So how soon? How many days? Oh, I have like three days. Three days. Oh, wow. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you guys all for your service. Nice. Yes. Yeah. It'll be a while before I get out. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a while before I get out. Plan, yeah, plan ahead. Twelve years right now, so. Yeah, plan ahead. But twelve years, you can be a real estate tycoon by then. This is true. We have some people that do that. You know, people that are in the military. Everywhere they go, it's like you got a house. Yeah, I got one at Columbus, Georgia, Fort Benning. You got one in uh, Fort Bragg. You got one here. You got one everywhere they go. I was stationed in the Presidio in San Francisco, in California. When I was in the military, that's like Paradise Island. And back then, home prices were like $200,000. Mm-hmm. And this was 1985 is when I got there. And right now in San Francisco, the cheapest, you're not going to find anything under a million dollars. No and way. that's for a little shack, you know, a little tiny shack. And I said, man, if I would have been smart, because I was an E5 mm-hmm. back then, I would have bought a house at 200000 and... Uh, it would probably be worth more than that because I wouldn't have gotten a shack for 200000 It was a house right there. So right now, a shack is like $2 million. So. All right, so it's my honor to prove, introduce Eric and Diane. They are the ones that do the mortgage, so we kind of partner with them uh, here as a real estate company. And they like to educate people on the different ways that you can uh, get into a house or invest in them. Uh, one of the attractions that uh, attracted me to them is that they have like a hundred was it a hundred and twenty different uh, investors or lenders that they work with so uh, when you have people that see oh, I got challenged well you only tried one let's try one of these other ones and see what they can do so all right so with that Eric Diane thank you thank you yeah we met uh, in a Marine Corps school again I'm Eric my wife Diane and um, during the years we we did do what uh, Jose just talked about. I bought my first house. Well, the Marine Corps, when I enlisted, I went to Okinawa, and um, so I couldn't buy a house there. But it's, I came back, I think I'll talk about it. Yeah, so both of us went from private to sergeant, and then uh, the Marine Corps, in their infinite wisdom, decided to demote both of us to lieutenants, and that's where we met, was in a, a school with a bunch of lieutenants. and. Uh, Let's see, I think I've got it in here too. Uh, Our retirement plan was to buy houses everywhere we went. In fact, our first date was me suckering her into painting the walls in a threeplex that I had just purchased. Tom Sawyer would have been proud of me. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, yeah, we bought a threeplex in in, um, Triangle, Virginia, and then we moved to Kent Pendleton, and we bought a duplex. And then our realtor called us, and we bought another duplex. Anyhow, uh, the Marine Corps then moved me up to Oregon as the Marine officer instructor, and we bought a commercial property and two more houses, and we just kept doing it. Then we got to Utah, then back to LA. Yeah, we've been all over. More houses, and this is what we were were doing, and this was gonna be our retirement. Um, We have a house in Arizona, and all that kind of crashed in 2008. I believe, I don't know if you'd agree with me, but I think the reason that we lost those properties in 2008 was because we didn't get good financial advice from the loan officers that we worked with. Um, We put everything on 15-year notes because we wanted it all done by the time we got to this magical age of 45. As you can tell, I've gone past that. And uh, we still, and and we lost our retirement, a lot of it. In fact, uh, today all we have left is a house in Arizona and the one that we just bought here in Killeen um, a couple months ago. So uh, I believe if we had had proper instruction, uh, we wouldn't have lost it. Because I lost my job and I was got, I was out for like nine months. And because the rents didn't cover the mortgages because we had them on 15 year notes, we weren't able to make up the difference when I didn't have a job. And that had just never calculated in my head that I wouldn't have a job for, for nine months. So anyhow, um, so we're not quite retired. We've got nine grandkids, one on the way. So we're, we should be, but we're not. We could have though, if we had, if we had done things right. So let me ask this most important question. Who's eligible for VA compensation or VA benefits with homes? You believe you are? You were a Marine? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, the Marines qualify, and then some other cats and dogs out there that, uh, you know, whatever. No, I'm just kidding. We can have fun, right? Anyhow, yes. Anybody that um, is in any of those services, including Space Command, um, no one space command. There's a couple of stray cats and dogs that are really surprising. Mercy. Yeah, they can get it. So basically, if you've been in during a wartime for 90 days, you get it. Uh, if you've been during peacetime for over 181 days, you also can qualify. We can go into your specifics it's, if you need it. It's so complex. It actually just takes figuring out your your service dates and figuring out what who you served with, if it was reserves or National Guard or whatever. It's it's surprisingly complex. So yeah, sounds like you're all active duty. So, or you were all active duty, so, whew. okay, that, that, that bridge is crossed. So, if you were a reservist or National Guard at six years, uh, and you got an honorable discharge, <laughs> etc. cetera. Um, who else? Well, uh, discharge for service-connected disability. Those people get it, even if they don't have the days. Um, surviving spouse of a veteran who died in war. Um, but you have to be under the age of 57. Sure. No, you don't have to be under the age of 57. It's another very complex thing. But if you know somebody who's a su surviving spouse, and then she may qualify, actually, if, if they died as a prisoner of war, or is missing in action, or um, if uh, they died of service-connected disabilities, or a service-connected problem, then they may actually be eligible. But there's other things like the age, and if they've remarried, and, before age 57, it's really complex. Like I said, I worked at the, VB, the Veteran Benefit Administration. It was a very hard to calculate this, so. Um, <laughs> and who can get financing? The vet, the vet and their spouse, or a veteran plus a veteran. Uh, on the home that we just bought right now, whose did we use, yours or mine? Hers. So the house we have right now is under her benefit. Um, and I guess the next one will go under mine. Um, one of the things that's unique to Veteran homes, loans, is that you must be owner-occupied. And yes, we did move into every single one of those mm -hmm. homes. Uh, in fact, when we found the second duplex, our realtor called us in, the, uh, I was on, on base. She called me at about 10.30 in the morning and said, Eric, I found a duplex for you. It fits your needs, but if you don't buy it before noon, my broker's gonna buy it. <clears throat> and I knew she wasn't kidding. She wasn't trying to push me. And, and so- how long have we been married at this point? Uh, less than a year, yeah. six months. Okay. Yeah, so now we're going on our third home, one, two, three, in less than six months. Um, and I ran out there, I saw it, and I said, wow. So I ran down to the bank, and uh, I didn't have enough cash. They wanted 20000 down. So I pulled money out with one credit card and took what cash we had in our savings, and I ran back and gave them a cashier's check and signed the contract. But we had to move into it. We moved into it for six months. So what we did, this is crazy. We told the people that were renting to go live in our house. We paid for them to move into our house. We moved into that one for six months. And after we had been there long enough, we refinanced it, pulled $80,000 out in cash, put it in our pockets, paid back those loans that we had. And uh, then we went back to our other house and let those people come back in. Anyhow, a lot of creative stuff. But yes, you do have to <laughs> occupy or plan on occupying a home if you're going to be... Um, use your VA benefit. You don't lose the benefit if you get transferred or something happens that you have to leave the mandatory <coughs> discharge or something like that. There's no, you know, if there's something that was, you know, unexpected. So I just say, if you came down on orders, just say, like, you were going to. Right. Right. Like, you weren't expecting people, yours. Like, I've only been here, I haven't been here that good for a year yet. About exactly. maybe a year. You can buy a house comfortably selection. right now, and if you got orders in two, three, four, six months or a year, if it was less than a year, that's not a problem because it's an unforeseen. If you already had orders, then I wouldn't do it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So Unless they were. What, what happens like, uh, so after the year, you can put the house for rent? Like you have to refinance? After six months, no, you, you could do it. You don't have to refinance. You can keep your VA loan. Yeah. Keep your, you, you can put it up for rent. And we're actually going to go over we'll that, go over that. Uh, shortly. Okay? Yep. But you don't, you don't have to change the loan. You just have to commit to living into it in a year. Again, barring unforeseen circumstances, and after that, like getting out, move or rent someplace else and rent that out. You can you can keep the VA loan on it. Mm -hmm. Don't have to get rid of it. Yep. So uh, <laughs> the certificate of eligibility is what gives this gives you this ability. <laughs> and um, if you guys want, Diane can just go online right now and help you get that certificate of eligibility. See where you're at. Um, we want to go through the top ten reasons why you'd want to get a loan or why to use a VA. VA loans have lower interest rates. 
Uh, the reason is, is that, well, let me go through this. VA loans um, are one of the least risky loans for the lenders. Why? Because the government is backing 80% of that loan. Well, they're right. actually backing 25% of it. Oh, they're doing 25? They're backing 25%. Got it. You get, you have an entitlement that's actually up to 144,000. It's actually 167,000 something right now. Anyway, and that's up to 25% of the home's value. So right now you could literally buy a $647,000 house and you use your VA benefit because they're going to back 25% of it. And because they back 25% of it, that's the equivalent of mortgage insurance. That's a protection enough for the for the lenders, the actual lender, because VA isn't a lender. That's enough for them to say, "Wow, we want this because it's got a government back guarantee." You know, government backed insurance. In fact, last night when we were putting this together, Diane saw this part where I had a, it's usually a quarter percent less, and she said, "Well, let me go check. What was the difference last night?" Over a percent. Over one percent so, difference. So a conventional buyer was close to five, four point nine nine for the sample I was using. The only thing I changed was was to a VA buyer, and I went from five for five percent to to zero percent down payment, and it was and it was three point seven five for the veteran borrower, and it was five percent interest for the conventional. And I can tell you all, you know, that was the credit score was the same and everything else. So anyway, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, so it's a good it's a good deal for the borrower. Um, VA loans again they're not risky to the banks because um, they're not they're not expensive they're not as expensive as a conventional loan because there's not as much risk for the bank so um, number nine lenders compete for the VA loans due to low risk um, the VA by the way VA loans they're not originated by nor funded through the VA right separate banks do that um, VA loans are not direct loans from the government. Mortgage rates are not set by the VA, they're set by the market. And then what we would tell you is to shop around for the best rate. And as Jose was saying, Diane and I are with a company called Nexa, and um, we are the largest wholesale broker in the nation. Think of so. Costco versus Target and Kohl's, or you know, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So think of good products, much better rates. And as Jose said, uh, we have over 160 lenders that we work with. So, you know, regardless of where, well, I shouldn't say for everyone, but, you know, if you've got a really low FICO score, there'll be a number of banks out there fighting to get your business, even though you've got a low FICO score. If you've got a high FICO score, you'll have even more banks out there fighting for. There won't be the same banks necessarily, but you're going to have different banks trying to get your loan, and we can help you. And that's one of the good things is, um, with us, you know, you fill out one application and then we put it into a system that then has all of those different banks competing for your business. Yeah, so I, I put it in and sometimes it's like I get 98 lenders saying, I want that loan, this is the interest rate I'm willing to offer, this is, you know, and other times there'll be like four or five is the interest rate and we can go down to 500. So the VA really is very flexible. There are other parameters. If you're under 580, you have to have some down payment, things like that. But but this it was the software that I have. It's comparing 160 different lenders and thousands of programs. And so when when I say, I you know I've got 45 products that we could choose from. That's different lenders, different different options. So it's really fun. I love having that resource because you're not limited to just what what that corner store has to offer. You literally just went to a mall with 160 lenders and you walked out at the end of the day without sore feet and sore back, you know, because you didn't have to walk around the whole thing. So we do get lower rates. We've got excellent terms. So some of you, you know, if you needed to close in 15 days, we've got lenders that can close real quickly. So different things. So excellent terms, faster closings. Um, another thing that we get at, at Nexa is we can go into something that's called loan officer support. And what is in there are our lenders. And so each of these lenders has a program for veterans. And I just grabbed the top ones, but they're all sitting right inside of there. So all we do is click on a Zoom link and we can talk to the account executive or talk to the underwriter. I talked to the underwriter at Kind a couple months back with the program. Anyhow, the point is we're not left alone either. We've got all, you know, because who can memorize 160 lenders programs, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody. But, <laughs> What I'm trying to say is we do have a live video link where we can go in and ask what the specifics are 
we can talk about you. In fact, um, what it really does is it gives us the ability to resolve problems very quickly face to face. They can't hide yeah. the behind a phone. They can't hide behind an email. They have to sit there and you know. And when there's a Zoom, you know, you pop into the Zoom room and you're like, "Hey, I'm working on you know John Sloan. What the heck is going on? Why are you conditioning me for this or whatever?" And they can't hide behind a phone or an email or whatever. They're physically looking at you. And I love it because you know it's resolution. You're getting it faster. So, so she had a problem with with one company. And oh, yeah. so she went and called the CEO of this company who had met with us in, a, in another training environment and said, hey, if you ever have a problem, give me a call. The actual CEO of this company, she called them up and said, hey, this is my problem. He said, ah, not a problem. Bring it to us. And so we took it from an East Coast lender to a West Coast lender and because oh, they wow. understood. It, it was dealing with um, a Hispanic family that, that um, had some issues that aren't always the same for say people that they hadn't been here for a long time and so their social security stuff mm -hmm. anyhow the people from california understood it the people from back east didn't and so she just called the ceo and she took care of it for him so it's kind of cool and, yeah. and i could change lenders because i had that ability the other yeah. lender just wasn't going to let it go through and i was like okay i'm going to call i could make three or four phone calls and the first one i called was him because i knew he was you know he wants business he looks at the whole package. He says, what do you know about these people? You know, and <clears throat> he's helped veterans in the past, too. I've heard Tom talk about that, yeah, how he had problems. Super so veteran. anyhow, point is, we've got a lot of support, even though we've got tons of, of products. Um, this is for you. Yes. This is, this is the one that you need. OK, go for it, Diane. OK, so you, you bought your house already. And I know the price isn't comparable. But say your first appointment, you know, you were here before, right? Was it you were here before? You bought a house for 125. You get sent someplace else, you know, and, and you put it up for rent. You're like, I don't have to sell it. I'm gonna come back to Fort Hood, whatever. You go away two, three, four, five, ten years, whatever it is, and you're renting that, and it's they're paying, making the mortgage payment. You come back and you're like, now I got a wife and kids and dogs, and that house isn't the right fit. I actually need this house, but I'm not gonna qualify because I already have 125 thousand dollar VA loan. What can I do? So I think I'm gonna have to. There, I think I'm gonna to have to sell it, right? But guess what, you don't, okay? 2022, as I said, your full entitlement, the VA guarantees 25% of that $647,200. You can literally buy a house or houses up to $647,200. Go ahead. Previous purchase was for 125. Return to Fort Hood and you want the 400,000. So now you're at 525. You literally have $125,000 left in your entitlement. Again, it's important that you use it as primary residence. You don't have to sell this house. Next, you can put it. You can keep it for rent and keep that rental income and keep passive income. Somebody else is helping to pay for your house. They're building your inheritance. They're building your legacy. Okay. And by the way, Diane didn't know this, but the reason I put this slide in here um, was because I had talked to a person that that's exactly what she had done. She and her husband had gone, been sent over to Germany, and when they came, well, they came back married. She went over single, they came back married, dual families, and now they had too many kids, and so they wanted to buy this house here in Colleen for 400, just a couple months ago. And her realtor told her, oh, well, if you've already used your VA, you're not gonna be able to use it again until you sell your house. And she was like, but I'm making so much money on that rental. And um, the realtor said, well, you can't use your VA benefit twice. You can only use it once. And so she ended up selling her home. And oh, when wow. I told her this, she was like, oh, no. So, yeah, she could have continued to keep the positive rent. I mean, think about how little the rent was or her mortgage was on a $125,000 home after being in Germany for however many years. So this is a real scenario. This is something a lot of people don't understand. And in your case, I don't know what your mortgage is. But when you get to California, this number is even bigger. So before you go selling your house, if you can get a positive cash flow out of your home here, you might choose to rent it. Again, you'd use a, you could use a, a mortgage uh, or a, a um, what do you call those things? A property management company. But anyhow, those are things that you can go through. But don't, don't think that you have to sell your house just because you're moving now. Okay? Um, especially like for people that are coming in and out of Fort Hood, it's like take advantage of as long yep. as you've got that entitlement, still entitlement available. Yep. And again, Diane can help them get pull that certificate of eligibility. Yep. VA loans don't have mortgage insurance. You want to talk to that one, Diane? 
Sure. Okay. So mortgage insurance is charged on conventional loans and FHA loans. Okay. Uh, for conventional loans, it's it's a percent as part of your monthly payment. Okay. And for FHA loans, it's a lower percent, but they also have an upfront fee. It's all called upfront mortgage insurance premium. Okay. So you're paying. You get your loan amount increase, and you're paying a monthly amount, and it can be hundreds of dollars. Okay, it can be hundreds of dollars, especially if you're doing no money down or the lowest, like three and a half for FHA or three to five percent down for conventional. It can be hundreds of dollars depending on your loan amount. However, the the VA does have. Go ahead. Oh, an FHA. If you put less than 10% down, the life of that loan, you will have to pay that mortgage insurance. I just talked to somebody the other day and they're like, oh, well, it was actually the inspector that came and the inspector that you might end up using if you work with, with um, Home Veg Realty. Um, he said, I was never told that I had to pay that mortgage insurance the rest of my life. You know, the rest of the, you know, the loan life amount, the not the life, but the life of the loan. I had no idea. And so you just keep paying. So if you put less than 10% down, a conventional loan, it falls off when you're below 80%. The blenders have to take it off at 78% and you can request, but that's all technical details. But the FHA, if you go FHA, um, you are required to pay it the whole life of the loan unless you put 10% down. How, the VA doesn't have mortgage insurance. They have a similar product. I'm not saying it's, it, they don't call it mortgage insurance, they call it a funding fee, okay? The funding fee is 2.3% of the loan for your first use, 3.6% of your loan for the second and subsequent use, unless <clears throat> your service connect is service connected disabled. Okay, they add it to your loan balance if you're buying a $500,000 house, and you get you have a 2 2.3% funding fee. Um, you have a 2.3% funding fee, then your balance will be 511500 okay? Because 11500 would be your service, your um, funding fee, okay? However, if you can compare in the first place, the rates are lower. And so even though you're financing a larger amount, the interest rates are lower, and you don't have the mortgage insurance, okay? So you end up saving about 457 a month. From the same home. Mm -hmm. Same home. You kept $25,000 in your pocket in the first place because you didn't have to pay the 5% down. You're not paying $457 a month in mortgage insurance. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So one of the myths is that uh, you always have to pay that funding fee if you're in the, um, when you go with a VA loan. It isn't true. If you are disabled, even at 10% like me, um, or you have a Purple Heart, and if you've got a Purple Heart, I bless you, man. I'm sorry. Uh, but in either of those two cases, you do not have to pay your funding fee. Right. If you get a 0% service connected, but you're getting compensated for it, even at 0%, as long as there's compensation, you get the, the funding yeah. fee. And again, if any of you are looking to file for disability, um, Diane has worked for the VA in that capacity and can help you with it. Right. I so. can't help. I can't help active duty. They need to be going through the process for active duty. But if somebody has not yet filed, um, but you said you hadn't filed yet. I just uh, recently filed, but it's like um, it's still pending. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. When did you file? In Jan January twenty fifth. Okay. Did you did you submit all your paperwork on January twenty fifth? Oh, or did you do an intent to file? An intent to file? Okay, and then you submitted all your paperwork. Yes. When did you close on your house? Last, yeah. uh, last year. So, if you had submitted the intent to file, you had submitted the intent to file before you closed, and you submitted all of your supporting, your actual claim, mm -hmm. within the year that you're given, you would have gotten that money back. And that's thousands. But okay. it would work for her next home if if you go to when you get to California, um, and you've got that eligibility. The difference there, depending on what you need to buy in California, uh, you wouldn't have to pay it. So. Even if you don't have the decision yet, letter yet, even if you don't have the compensation yet, it will be backdated to the day that you originally filed if you get a compensation, and so they will refund you. And I actually had that happen at our previous house we bought in Utah, and they refunded me. It was fifteen thousand. Yeah. So I mean, we're not talking. Yeah, these are not small numbers. On a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home, you know, your first home, 
5,700, and on the uh, subsequent use, 9,000. So how many gallons of milk does that buy? You know, how many, <laughs> how many whatever? You yeah. know? Gasoline yeah. right now. Well, well it doesn't get much <laughs> gasoline. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, it's real. This is real money that stays in your home. Yeah. That's going for your lifestyle and your needs instead of going, you know, and obviously you pay for it with, with the cost, the physical disability. But if you've got one, you please let me help you file an intent to file. And, and in your situation, you're just waiting for an answer. But. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> this is one last slide just showing mortgage insurance versus no funding fee. You're saving an estimated $500 a month. Okay. So not a huge difference, but. If we can get rid of it, not only do you not have to pay, pay the funding fee, you're saving about an extra fifty dollars even more a month. So, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the fifth reason: VA loans are super flexible. Uh, part of that flexibility comes. Well, you can do an adjustable, but part of that flexibility just comes with the fact that um, the government's, you know, backing it. So lenders will come up with. As I said, that this is not a loan that's given to you by the government, and so all these lenders become very creative. So you can use it to purchase, you can use it to refinance, um, you can use it to do improvements on your property, um, single family homes, condos, new builds, over the counter, uh, or one time closes, I, OTC, I think drugs, <laughs> over the counter. <laughs> All right, I can't even read my own slides, but one time close is what the OTC stands for there, thank you. Uh, one time close construction, manufactured homes. Now I put those, in blue just because here in Colleen we do have a lot of new construction I've talked to I don't know how many people that say I want to go buy a piece of land five miles outside of Colleen and I want to drag a trailer on there a manufactured home from whoever knows whom you know but you can bring those in and we do have those loans you go down the street to your typical lender that has only their products these three are probably not going to be on it. Yeah, they'll do a single family home and a condo and a duplex and a three and a fourplex. But if you wanted to build, they probably wouldn't have that kind of a product. And that's, again, one of the benefits of working with a broker is that we have a lot more. Um, the only requirements the re are that it's safe, <clears throat> sanitary, and structurally sound. And what that turns into is the roof. The roof has to be protecting the structure. If the roof has any kind of damage whatsoever, if the gutters and the eaves aren't work for working properly, then the roof isn't actually protecting the house. Okay, so the whole roof and home protection system, the paint, they, you're not, they're not going to let you get away without having the wood surfaces painted. Why? Because it's an entry for wood, wood insects, you know, boring insects like termites and things like that. So it has to be safe. The floor can't be caving in. You can't, you know, they're not going to, they can't be afraid that, that the, you know, that, um, that you're going to step someplace and you're going to fall through. They're not going to let you. Um, they're not going to let you have a place that doesn't have clean water. Um, you know, yeah. clean and safe water that that doesn't have good drainage. It, it could be a septic system. I don't know if they allow. They must allow septic systems and and things like that. But it has to be a functioning system. It has to be something where you're not living in. You know, in filth or mold or, or whatever. It's not going to let you buy that kind of house. Well, when Diane and I moved here, we were looking for houses, right? I was blown away by the fact that some realtors would put in there no VA loans accepted. And I thought, why on earth did they do that in a city like Colleen? The reason is the homeowner doesn't want to fix things that they know are bad anyhow, so find a different house, you know? Right. But that's because probably the reason. said, we know there's a problem that the VA won't accept and we're not going to fix it. So if it says no VA loans, just understand that's really what they're saying. Yeah. Okay? So, the seller doesn't want to fix right. that property. The seller doesn't want to fix it. And if you get a VA appraisal, and it's the appraisal that identifies those types of things. And VA appraisers are actually specially trained for to look for the things and, and comment on the things that the VA requires as part of the safe, sanitary, and structurally safe. Yeah. Uh, VA loans are easier to qualify for. Um, again, compared to other loans, VA loans requirements are more lenient. Mm -hmm. Why? As we've already said, the Department of Veterans Affairs guarantees part of that. And so the lenders don't feel as worried about being able to resell your home if you skip out on your bill. And That's the VA basically. understands that home ownership is stabilizing. It's financially beneficial to the veterans. They understand that this program is incredibly powerful in the lives of the veterans that can take advantage of it. So they really genuinely want 
you to get homes and they make it as easy as possible. Like I said, down to a 500 credit score. They don't even require, most of the other types of lenders require two years of stable income. The, re that, sorry, not the, the, Veterans, the Veterans Administration doesn't care, okay? If you have a stable job, they, they will probably approve you. So you don't need to have, like, for, so for California, we were trying to buy a house, but since he was getting out already, I thought you need to have, like, two years. They so typically like, want two years. Some lenders will require that, but in general, the VA doesn't require that. They say, you just have to have a stable income, you have to prove at least a 30-day paycheck. Okay, so what do you do once you get out? You have mm -hmm. a job, yeah. And by the way, Diane is licensed in California, so she can help right. you there, too. <laughs> in fact, she's got licenses in. Uh, that's another one of the benefits of being with a broker, is that I have licenses in five states, and I think you've got what ten. So, and California is one of them. So, Georgia, um, Texas, Florida, California, Arizona, Utah, just some of them that we've got. Do you have your disability award yet? Me, I propose to So the, what they do is they'll count that for income. I don't know what percent it is, but they'll count for that for income. And because it's not tax, they'll actually plus it up. I think the VA, the VA, I think the FHA pluses it up 115%. So if you get a thousand, they're going to give you um, 1,150. Um, but I think the VA goes 125%. So so if a, you've got a thousand dollars a month, they'd give you 1,250 for value, for income value, because it's non-taxable. So that's one of the one of the values. So. Um, but they do need a 30-day, you know, 30-day pay, mm -hmm. proof of pay. And not the way to see income. Right, income in where you're going to. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a little bit more difficult. Uh, the VA allows closing cost assistance. This is what I was talking about earlier. Get it. All right. Typical closing costs in Colleen right now for a $250,000 home in Bell County. The title company, these are all fees that the lender doesn't control and the realtor doesn't control. These are just fees that, that are, I mean, you can, the, the title companies will charge differently, but there's not a lot of difference. This is just a rough estimate. $250,000 house, $2,700 for the title company, the recording fees, the lender's insurance, the, all of those things. You're gonna have to prepay insurance. From the day you close to the end of the month. That's the only time you mortgage you ever ever prepay end interest. Sometimes to the end of the month. Prepaid in, I'm sorry, interest. Prepaid interest. Oh, I said okay. insurance. Prepaid interest is from the day you close to the end of the month. Right. Okay. Some people say, oh, you get to skip a payment. No, actually, you just prepaid the interest. Okay. <sighs> so if they say you're skipping a month, just, just call the BS way. Okay, because it's not true. You prepaid it, and then when you get to the end of that month, say if you were closed today, we paid prepay the interest from today to March 31st. You would have already paid for this month. And then April, you're going to pay the interest for April on May 1st, okay? So you post pay interest, except for when you close, and then you prepay, then you prepay it to the end of the month. So if you close on the 29th, you're paying for three days of interest. If you close on the second, you're paying for 29 days of interest. Does that make sense? So if you can, put it for later closing, because that reduces your closing costs. But that's, that's just a game that we, we play to try to keep as much money in our borrower's pockets as we can, okay? About $900 in prepaid homeowner's insurance. You have to pay for the whole year, mm -hmm. okay? You have to pay for the whole year. Then you have to pay, they ask you to have three months of reserves of your homeowner's insurance and of your property taxes in an escrow account. And then typically the lender is responsible for paying the annual homeowner's insurance and the property taxes. That way you don't have to come up with that dollar amount every year you know, to, to make those. It's kind of a forced savings, but it works for most people. That's about $5,500. Then the appraisal, you're going to end up paying for the appraisal ahead of time. And somebody asked me the other day, do veterans prepay appraisals? Yes, because right now in this market, you may end up paying for more than one appraisal. Okay. The goal is to get it inspected beforehand and then do an appraisal once you're sure that the house is going to meet your requirements, you know, in terms of, in terms of um, its condition. So you minimize the number of times you do the appraisal. My best lender gives a $600 credit. I also personally give a $600 credit on the home you close. Okay? So um, depending on which lender we use, um, you'll get at least a $600 appraisal credit on the home that you purchase. And that just went up, huh? Yes, just went up. We had, I think, <coughs> three appraisers retire from this area. 
none of, as I said, none of these fees are controlled by the lender, the realtor, the loan originator, because those are fees outside our control, other than the fact that I can give a discount for veterans for the uh, $600 toward their, their appraisal when they closed. So any of your lenders will give a $600 credit? No, one I have of them. one lender that gives it automatically. Right now it's part of a special package they're doing. I don't. I think it ends mid-April. But I personally do that for all of my veteran borrowers. Which just comes out of our commissions. Right. Yeah. Um, and this might not be... One of the things that Diana and I have done on almost all of our homes, and it might not work in today's market, but just tick it in the back of your head for when the market kind of changes because it will over your lifetimes. Um, what we always did is if somebody was asking, in this case, 250 for the home, we would offer 255. I got you in the next slide. Oh, okay. It's okay. <laughs> VIA allows closing cost assistance, okay? You can get a gift from a family or friend. You can get seller concessions, which means you say, well, I'd like you to pay 5,000 towards my closing cost. They, that may not work right now because there's so few homes and they're so competitive. If you ask for anything, they're probably not even going to accept your offer. So this is not, you're going to have to ignore that right now. But that's only in the last year to even 18 months. Right. Most of your lives, I don't expect it to be that way. So you can, if, it's a, if there's more buyers than houses, you can't do it. But if there's more houses than buyers, you can ask the seller to give some, they call them seller concessions because they want to sell their house and they're looking for a buyer. Okay? And the easiest way to do that is just to increase your offer. So the home that Diane and I bought, you'll find this story has run through itself many times in our lives. But um, the last house we bought before the one here in Texas, uh, I was just chatting with one of the gals that I worked with in our office. And she came over to my cubicle and I was showing her, you know, how to buy a house. So she's about ready to go out and buy this $80,000 sports car because she was making all kinds of money. And I was like, don't buy a sports car, go buy a duplex. Oh, I can't afford a house. I said, yes, you can. And so I was just walking her through the numbers. And when she walked away from my desk, I thought, well, I wonder if there's anything around here with two acres or more within five miles of my office, right? So I just did a search and put it in the criteria of, of two, two acres and within five miles of our zip code. And sure enough, this property popped up. It was a horse property right in the middle of town and it still had two acres. And I was like, wow. So I called a friend of mine that was a realtor, his name's Fred, and I said, hey, Fred, what's going on with this house? He goes, I don't know, I'll find out. So he calls the, uh, the, the seller's agent, and he calls me back 10 minutes later, and he says, um, well, it's owned by three brothers. They inherited it from their father. None of them live here in Utah. They're all out of state, and uh, they had it under contract, but it fell out for some reason. The agent wouldn't tell me why, and they're just frustrated, and they want to get rid of this thing so they can get their inheritance money. So they're going to drop their price by 10000 on Saturday because they still had to get one brother to give the okay because it took all three of them to say okay. Mm -hmm. And the home was for four ten, And I said, and so I knew they were going to drop the price to 400 on Saturday. And they had only been on the, on, the, on the listing for like six hours. I mean, it was just pure serendipity, right? And so I said, okay, Fred, make them an offer right now for four ten, and they pay my closing costs. And Fred goes, well, we have to go see it. I said, no, we don't, Fred. Well, yes, we do. I'm not going to put in an offer until you've seen it. I said, Fred, I want an offer right now for 410. They pay my closing costs. No, Eric, we need to go see it. I said, Fred, you're not the only realtor I know in this market. Do you want the commission or would you like me to call another friend? And he goes, okay, okay, okay. So then I called up Diane and I said, expect an email in just a second from Fred. We're putting an offer on a house in Clinton. And I said, what? <laughs> She's like, what? Because we had a nice house that we enjoyed, but I wanted more acreage. Anyhow, they accepted it. And then we walked away from it to come here to Texas. But the point is, is that, um, you know, you can, you don't have to always think, well, I'm going to undercut the market, you know, give them what they want, give them more than what they want. I mean, what's an extra $5,000 amortized over 30 years for you to get a home that for us, we bought that at 410. We lived in it for just over a year and a half, two years. Oh, that's right. It was just at two years. So we didn't have to pay the, the gains. And we sold it for 650 in two years. That's good. Wow. And that's what we came and put our down payment on this house that we just bought here in Texas. So, you know, if Fred had lost me that deal because they got other offers, you know, 
who cares about that extra 10,000 I paid? And they give it back to me anyhow. Anyhow, sorry I'm dragging this on, but um, there's things to think about when you're dealing with buying properties and paying the lowest amount is not always the best way to get it. Getting that property because it's appreciating is the thing to do. All right, so you can get a gift from friend or family to help you with closing the house. You can sell with concessions if the market will bear it, which it won't right now. You can choose a slightly higher interest rate if it's available, because I can show you, we can actually do a Zoom session and you can actually see in my software, you can see behind the curtain and see, well, if you take this much higher of an interest rate, I can help you with two, three, or four thousand dollars in closing costs. But it's gonna cost you an extra 20, 30, or 40 dollars in, in, you know, a month in your monthly payment. Is it worth it to keep five grand in your pocket? Maybe yes, maybe no, it's up to you. But you have the choice. Other option we have here in Texas is called T-Shack. There are down payment assistance programs in other states. I know there's some in California. I know there's some in North Carolina. The only question is which one is right for you. T-Shack is specific to Texas and it allows you either a grant, which is forgiven after six, you make six payments on your house, you get that grant forgiven. And it's for three, four, or 5%. We're talking a $300,000 house that's a $9,000 grant. $12,000 grant gift, free money, free, I'm gonna clarify that, twelve or $15,000 that you get after you make six payments on your house, it's forgiven. It is a slightly higher interest rate. The interest right now, right now on a on a 3% is at five. Remember last night I checked and it was at 3.75 for, for borrower, so that's a cost. Okay, so it does come with a cost. And if you later wanna refinance after six payments, you could refinance down to a lower uh, lower interest rate if the market rates are lower. And that can, that's usually about a $2,000 cost. But if you just got $15,000, it might be worth the $2,000 to refinance. Does that make sense? And that $2,000 can be, can be worked into the loan amount. So just saying, there, it does, the, that one does come at a cost. The other one is a, two, is a second lien, and it'll stay on for three full years. So if you leave the house, if you, um, if you sell the house or you refinance, you have to pay it all back if you do that within three years. If you go three years in one day, no problem. But for somebody in your situation, I wouldn't do that for you. I would not let you do that separately because you don't know if you're gonna be here in three years. If somebody was just transferred here and was you know, pretty stable, I'd say, yeah, we could do that. But I would encourage them to do the grant, the forgive them the money. It's not that much higher. Well, what if you moved out and kept renting that home though for until you primary got to residence. primary you residence only? Okay. Primary residence for Okay, so well, there are options. Okay, oh, and they have the awesome Texas uh, mortgage mortgage um, credit certificate that you get. Like anyway, taxes this year used to be your mortgage insurance. You could actually deduct it dollar for dollar from your taxable income. This year they threw it into your standard tax deduction, and so you can't deduct it anymore unless you have something like this. It's a mortgage credit certificate and now you can again deduct it dollar for dollar even if you take the standard deduction okay you have to itemize unless you itemize you don't get to count it unless you have this mortgage credit certificate which is amazing because that's going to save you dollar for dollar thousands for the, at least the first 10 years okay it is like woo all right the number three no prepayment penalties uh sell it pay it off refinance it or you can get what's called an interest rate reduction um, refinancing loan to just lower your interest rates. And Texas doesn't allow you to do a cash out refi for, for veterans or FHA, any government backed loan. But in California, you can, as well as North Carolina, most other states. It's just Every Texas. state except for Texas allows you to borrow up to 100% of the value of your home with a VA. Texas has a rule because they don't want homeowners losing their equity. So Texas has this. Uh, mothering or fathering type uh, yeah. <laughs> law that keeps oh, us from great. doing that. Yeah. yeah, so mommy and daddy aren't letting us do it. Um, veterans often get special deductions and choices. Discounts. Discounts, yes. sorry, I can't read. An application fee, okay? Up to $600, as I said, reimbursed on the, for the appraisal of the home you close, okay? No lender underwriting or, or, excuse me, no lender underwriting fee or the lower interest rate you choose. And the loan origination fee can be lender paid or borrower paid, you choose, okay? And I want to explain that in the next slide, okay? Go on. Okay, there are lenders out there who will tell you, oh, don't worry, we don't have an origination fee and we don't have an underwriting fee. 
I will guarantee you that the vast majority of them are putting it into the interest rate because I have that option and I see it happen all the time. I give you the choice. You can either pay the 900 to basically 1,000 to 1,300, you can pay them in advance, okay, as part of your closing costs, or we can put it in your interest rate, but you get the choice. And I'm not gonna lie to you and say, oh, there's no underwriting fee. Yeah, it is, it just got thrown into your interest rate, okay? But you get to choose with me, okay? The loan origination, the lender has to get paid. The loan originator, like me, I do have to get paid to do this, and I can never have you pay me at closing, or the lender can pay me. If you pay me at closing, it is, it's a set dollar amount. If the lender pays me, it becomes part of the interest rate, okay? If you pay me, it's 1% mandated by, by the VA. Mm -hmm. Max compensation, if you pay me, it's 1% on that $250,000 house, it's 2,500 max. But it's $2,500, you have to come out of pocket though, okay? If your lender pays me, it's a specific interest rate, okay? And so that's really the question is, so how do you want to do this? Do you want to pay cash at closing or do you just want to include it and keep your cash in your hands? Okay, again, those are, those are fake savings. If they're saying that and it's, and it's being included in the interest rate, that's, to me, that's not fair, okay? Those things have to be paid, either cash at closing or put it in the interest rate. I want you to understand when you're being bamboozled, okay, <laughs> you know? You said it's 1%? 1%. If they if pay, pay If they pay at closing, it's 1%. That's mandated by federal law. Right. If you go through the lending company, it's going to be anywhere between 2.75 to 4%. Between 2 to 4 or 5. Between yeah. 2 and 5%. If they put it in the interest rate, they're going to increase it by between 2 to 5%. It just depends on the lender. Yep. Okay? So they don't like to explain that part. They don't explain that. And like I said, I want you guys to have choices. I want you to understand what it is you're getting. Okay? That's me personally. That's not necessarily Nexa mortgage, but that's how I do business. Okay, and I want you to understand that. I don't know that I could do a North Carolina loan. I can look and see if I'm able to do that loan, but I can definitely hook you up with another Nexa lender and I'll explain what I've explained here. Okay. Um, you get to choose. Okay, keep going. All right. And uh, the number one, we've already hit it a number of times, no down payment, right? And so um, most home programs require three, five, 10, or 20% down. And they're getting much more strict on that where people are buying a second home and claiming it's a second home, but it's really an investment. And they're sticking them with that 20% for investment properties. So uh, again, if you've moved, you can get away with it uh, uh, with the VA. Is that uh, no down payment? Is that based on the person's credit score though, or? No. no, just having been in the army for you. So, mm -hmm. like you know, a bunch of different things. Like, so I hear something like, oh, well, in order to use your bid, like this, you gotta have like a 16 or five. It depends on the lender. Mm -hmm. Now that's a lender, they call it a lender overlay. That lender only has that product, okay? So if you have a 580, um, there may be, there may, they may have lender overlays that say you have to put so much down if you've got this credit score, or we can't work with you if you're below this score. And those are lender overlays. That's the beauty of what I have is I can, I'm shopping it with 160 lenders. Now if you've got a $500, 500 credit score, I'm going to be down to one, two, maybe three, and, and it, it's going to be a difficult loan, okay? I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but um, but I'm not limited by <coughs> just just only the loans in my one shop, okay? So yes, I can do 550, 560, 570, 580. I can do 510, 500. However, it, it does get a little dicey because I've got a lot less options down there. So it depends. I, I One guy called up and he wanted to do a VA loan and he has $170,000 in child support in arrears. I was like, dude, you ain't never qualified. <laughs> You're just gonna... <laughs> It's federal debt. He's never going to qualify for a VA, USDA, or FHA loan because any federal debt, your student loans, you're not paying on your student loans, you're not going to qualify. They can be deferred, that's fine. But if you, child support is a federal debt. He's like, okay, and he had a 521 credit score, and conventional won't go below 6, 620, preferably 640. I like, you're a lovely dude. That was the only person I've ever said, mm, not happening enough, you know? <laughs> Maybe not in my lifetime, but so and they it, feel bad. But. In my mind, what's good about this is the cash on cash return. 
using other people's money, in this case, the bank's money. Um, so that brings up the question, what are you doing with your BHA? BAH, I know, I call it, I'm dyslexic. What are you doing with your BAH? Steve's smiling, right? I'm smiling because I live on purpose. That's the reason I'm sorry. There you go, okay. So here's what, something that a lot of us don't understand, is we all have a mortgage, it's just not yours. Can I use you as an example? Yeah. All right, come on up here. Steve, correct? Yeah, Steven. Steven, okay. How much is your uh, BAH right now, Steven? About fourteen fifty. All right, I'm gonna give you fourteen fifty. So let's see. Here's three hundred. There's six hundred. There's nine hundred. There's twelve. Thirteen. 14 and let's call that extra. Okay, now see that cute lady right there? She works for BAH Housing on base. You got your money, who do you give it to? Uh -huh. Yeah, to her. How much you got left? Nothing. Nothing. All right, so you did get a mortgage, but it went to build a house on the base. All right, now let's say that you had a landlord and you're renting. I'll give you another 1400 So three, six, 12. You gave him 1500 last time. Did I? Yeah. 14. Oh, I got to give you, yeah, I gave you 15 because I don't have 50s. See that young lady over there? Yep. Yeah, she's your landlord. Where's your money going? The landlord. To the landlord, okay. Are you paying a mortgage? So you're money? still paying a mortgage, right? All right, let's do this one more time. Let's say you own a home. Here you go. One, two, three. There's the 12 hunter. And two more. Well, I'll give you 15. Now, where does that money go? In my pocket. Into your own pocket. Well, you end up buying it from a, but you own that home. You see, we all have a mortgage. It's just, it's somebody else's if we're not using it for ourselves. So That's I free money. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not losing all the money and still getting money on my pocket. I'm still I'm putting it in my pocket. Somebody with the army. Thank okay? you, Steve. They want to buy a house. He's like, oh, I'm too afraid. I don't want to do this. It's okay. Well, how much do you think rent is going to be? Where the kind of house you want to buy in Killing? About 1500 Well, it's probably 2000 now. Right? Mm -hmm. Even just in the last three months, it's probably very late. 1500 times a year is what? 18000 18000 How long is she going to be here? Five years. That is $90,000. Now, if you're paying out a mortgage, not all of that is equity. Most of that is going toward interest. I get it, but still, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars is probably where you are after five years. What and the appreciation is still yours. So let's. What's the more important is the appreciation. Oh my gosh, in five years, mm -hmm. Helene is projected to have appreciated. I think it's a four percent a year. So go ahead. Sorry. All right. So what we did is we put this together again. Us, real people, Diane and I. Now I was divorced when I enlisted in the Marine Corps and I had kidlets, so I was getting paid with dependents. And this is what I was making in <coughs> California or Okinawa, my BAH. I simplified it even though we all know I got overseas pay when I was in Okinawa, but you get the same idea. 2,985, That's right? Today, today's rates, even though we- Today's were, rates, we were, yes. We this is today's in, rates because I couldn't find the rates for when I, was, when I was enlisted. But um, that's over those three years, or that's 35,800, that I was getting each year from the government tax-free or 107,000 between the ranks of E1 and E5. And yes, I went from E1 to E5 in two and a half years, all meritoriously promoted. Oh, uh, anyhow, um, that's why they demoted me to lieutenant or one of the reasons. And so we went back to Camp Pendleton and this was my BAH with uh, prior enlistment, right? So again, the next two years, 88,000 the next year or the next two years as a 02 90,000 and then one year at Camp Pendleton as a as a captain 46,000 and then we went to Oregon and you'll note that the amount I got paid in Oregon wasn't close to what it was in in uh, California but still I got paid over the 10 years I was in 382,000 tax free dollars So then Diane's, same time, except she was 12 years, and uh, hers came out to $498,000. So if you add those two together, and you think about the homes that we bought, right, that helped us buy 
this, 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 you know, those houses. Because every time we moved, we could redo it. So anyhow, think about that too. 881,000 tax free. If I had been a civilian earning that money, by the time I could put 881 in my pocket, how much did I actually have to earn to put that in there? About a million dollars? So over a 10 year period, we got paid nearly a million dollars. Well, 881 is what we did get paid, but it would have taken me earning, us earning almost a million dollars to get that because we put it into our own house and then we put them up for rent. So why do most active duty rent? Uh, I would say fear, you know, um, and what is fear? False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. We're scared of it. Well, you know, and, and everything wasn't roses <laughs> when we bought our house. We bought, I bought that threeplex before we got married, but we then owned it together when we got out to Pendleton and one of the threeplexes we rented to a young Marine and, um, we were both on a deployment and something she broke. Eight and a half months pregnant. Eight and a half months pregnant she and the water, heater stopped the water heater stopped working. And all she did is tell her, her commander that it, she was renting from two Marines. Uh, guess mm. what that colonel did? He called my colonel. And guess who got chewed out out in the field? Guess who got a property manager that day? You know, so it's not always beautiful, but that's why you hire property managers. And so you learn from these stupid mistakes that you make. But after that, even when we were, even when Diane and I owned a duplex and we were on one half of the house and we had a renter on the other house, we had a property manager dealing with the monies for that person so that we could just be their neighbors. So anyhow, home prices are too you, high. I hear that actual, all the time. You can buy so, up to a fourplex with the VA loan. Fourplex. You can rent out three and live in one yourself. We did that a lot. And the cost is amazing. Here in Killeen, what's a fourplex running? Probably not your favorite neighborhoods, but if you don't have kids, or if you don't have, you know, if it's if this is just a stepping stone, buy a single fourplex, get a property management company, and she's, she's yeah, like Stephen, oh my gosh, she owns some fourplexes. Some fourplexes, right, exactly, and and it's like. So I actually went out to Zillow to do this presentation, and I looked at that threeplex that we bought, and then it was one twenty-five, now it's three sixty-six. That first house that we bought, we bought it for 153, it's now worth 735. Um, that second duplex that I told you about where we you know, swapped renters, that one's worth, we bought it for 120 and it's now worth 818. This is the one that Diane was, this was a fourplex we bought in LA. We bought it for 460. We only held it about a year and a half and sold it for almost six something, but it's now worth 1.6 million. Uh, again, Oregon, what we did there. So anyhow, the VA helped us with down payments of 1.1 million and uh, the current market value on those properties is 2.5. Back to what Jose said in the beginning of this thing. Renters have an average net worth of about $4,000. Homeowners, even if we had just been knucklehead Marines and done nothing more than that, we'd have $1.5 million in, in equity right now. So without selling them. So what's your cash on cash return when you pay zero down? Infinite, right? You know, because you're not doing that. Anyhow. So here's the excuse I always hear. Well, I'm only going to be here three years. And then what's the excuse at your next duty station? Well, I'm only going to be here, right? For three years. And what's the excuse at the next one? Well, I'm only going to. And then you get to retired. And then what's the excuse? Can't afford it. Looking so. that a veteran in Utah rented a house for 22 years, the same house for 22 years, would have had it nearly paid off. His rent was like $800 a month. Owners sold it, new owners came in, said we want to rent out, and we're going to charge $2,000 a month. Well, now we've got a veteran on a very fixed income who's got to try to buy in one of the hottest markets in the U.S., which is north, north of Salt Lake. Yeah. You know, and suddenly, He's going from a less than a thousand dollar a month payment to a two thousand dollar a month payment on fixed income. I like a better story. The second or third person that Diane talked to when we became loan officers was a Marine Gunny at El Toro, which is in the LA area. And he had bought a home when he moved into the into El Toro as a young enlisted, and he had over what was it, two million that was sitting in the bank? 
because he had sold that house. I mean, where does a gunnery sergeant, an E7, E7 have $2 million after just living their life in the Marine Corps? So fabulous stories about owning. So that's the question, you know, uh, what's the legacy you're leaving? Diane and I just, sorry for using this as an example, but her mother just passed away and this is the farm that we were at. Um, been in the family for 140 years. Yeah, been in the family for many, many years. Um, not that that's going to happen for you guys, but just saying. That's, um, but that's where all the memories were created. But that's a value. That's, that's a value. value, yeah. yeah. That's a huge value. It's the place that we've all met at for the last 30 years that Diane and I have been together. Yes, Rose? Repeat that story again about the two million. <laughs> so this gunnery sergeant, he's an E7, and he bought a home in El Toro when he first got stationed there as an enlisted. And he came in and out of that area, right, with the Marine Corps. He was in, he was in air, the, the wing, which is what we have there in the Marine Corps. We've got an, uh, a wing. So he had an MOS that had him always going back to some place that had that kind of maintenance. And he finally retired, and he sold that house, and he decided he wanted to move out to Riverside, California, instead of down you know, in the L.A. area. He was able to sell that home and pocket $2 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and again, what's an E7 make these days? Anybody here in this room know? Probably, it's not E6. Okay. So, and then my E7, he said, just for VA, just for like. Well, just his VAH, income. He, just VAH, he gets like 1600 Well, no, more than that in California. Because right. yeah. I was getting, you know, whatever, yeah. So. Yeah. So amazing. That's, that's just one of those where, like you said, don't let anybody tell you you have to sell it. You have so much entitlement. Now, you buy a $600,000 house here. That's kind of a one shot, one you know, one kill. That your amount is gone. But if you buy a two hundred here and your next duty station another two hundred or two hundred fifty and your next duty station another two hundred, two hundred fifty. Well you can still buy fourplexes here in Colleen for right, under three hundred and fifty, four hundred, right? Am I right there? Yeah. Real estate agents? Yeah. yeah. So it just depends on what you want for a short period of your life. Yeah. You know? Live in it for a year, live in one of them for a year, and then so here's the steps, and I know some of you aren't going to be in this area, but find a broker with multiple VA lenders, okay? If you go to a specific bank, they only have one product, and you're not getting the competing nest right. need I of that. I love looking at my <coughs> list of lenders that for, for a specific you know, person or couple or family. I love looking at it and going, these guys are competing for their business. These guys, you know, they're giving you their best race because they want this business. So that's fun. Find a loan officer that understands the VA, right? And can help you with those specific issues. Um, get pre-qualified letter, if possible, or a pre-approval letter um, from them. And so that pre-approval letter, you can give that to your realtor, and now your realtor knows what you can afford, right? So you're not out just looking at la la land going, oh yeah, I can get a $600,000 loan without knowing it. So that's what that pre-approval does. There are so few houses out there right now that most realtors won't work with you unless you have a pre-qualification letter, mm -hmm. okay? Because they want to know how much you qualify for because they've got so many buyers for so few homes, they don't want to, they don't want to waste your time or their time. Mm -hmm. Not only that, when you're putting an offer, the seller is requiring for you to have proof of funds if you're paying cash, or you have a pre-approval letter, it's, it's very, mm -hmm. It's very important to say pre-qualifications are not getting offers accepted in this market. Right. So here's what you need to give a loan officer to do that. You got to get your certificate of eligibility or show your DD-214 or well, both of those. Uh, w-2 for the last two years, pay stubs or LES for one month, uh, bank statements for two months, tax returns for the last two years, uh, bankruptcy paperwork if applicable, and divorce decree if you're paying child support and then fill out an application with the lender. Now, I know, that's the ugly part, right? That isn't the sexy part, that's not the fun part, but that's what allows the realtor to then go out with you and do the fun stuff. Look at houses, right? <laughs> yeah. So now you get to do the pretty stuff once you've done the hard stuff. But the realtors like the pretty stuff. I, yeah. I deal with the nitty gritty pretty but stuff. All day. Having that pre-approval letter is going to allow your realtor to do a better job of finding a home that fits your family's needs. Okay, so um, then find a realtor that understands vets. And luckily, we're working at you know Home Vets Loan, so everybody here is good with that, right? Uh, find a home you are approved for. 
right? Uh, make an offer, and then um, you get a. You're gonna get when the seller accepts that offer, you get a signed purchase contract. And then, by the way, that conversation that I was having with Fred, that friend of mine that's a realtor, I said, Fred, get that property under contract for me today. You know, Fred, that I have 16 ways from Sunday to get out of this contract as the buyer. I can say that there was a termite this, or I didn't like that. I can get out of a contract. The seller cannot get out of that contract unless you don't comply with it. And so don't, I would, this is just Eric speaking and I probably shouldn't because I'm not a real estate agent, but you know, you can bid on a home and then if you change your mind, you can get out of it because there are ways and they, and your realtors can explain the clauses that they put in there to allow you to legally get out of a contract and get your down payment money back. Right. But that was why I said to Fred, Hey, get me under contract, Fred. I don't have to have seen this property before I bid on it because I can then go look at it and go, oh yeah, it does have a cracked foundation. No, I don't want it. And all I have to do is put down cracked foundation and I'm out of the contract. But they can't get out of the contract with me. And they had two cash offers on that home before we finally closed. So yeah, as backups. So anyhow. The other thing I wanted to say is you have on the realtor side, you have a listing agent that's the agent that's helping the sellers and you have a buyer's agent. Sometimes people, people will tell you, oh, we'll just reach out to that listing agent. They've got that help with house for sale. You are not protected. That listing agent's first legal and financial responsibility is to the seller. They have signed a contract saying that they are, they are legally and financially responsible to protect the seller. You are second class. You are a second class citizen in that relationship. You never ever want to go with a seller's agent unless you're a very experienced buyer. And there's very specific reasons you would do that. But I strongly encourage you to find a realtor that's on your side, mm -hmm. that is that is has your financial and legal responsibilities, their primary interest. Does that make sense? So you're gonna go out there, you may go on realtor.com. Great resource. I love it. Okay. I don't ever go on Zillow. I don't ever go on Zillow because most of the properties that are out there have already been sold and they're just leaving them out there because they're trying to get you to call them, okay? That's not good, that's not a good realtor, okay? So you can go out there, realtor.com, if they list a real estate agent, great. Call up Yami, call, call up Rose, call up Sydney, whoever it is you've chosen to work with, call them and say, hey, I wanna look at this house or get the details on this house. They they will do their work for you, make them work for you, okay? That's our, that's our job. Take, make sure you're choosing a realtor that will protect you. Yep. And then once you've got that offer, you're going to finish the application because you've already done a lot of the paperwork beforehand. Um, and so you go, you finish up that loan op, that loan application. Um, now the appraisal. The appraisal right now is a sticky issue here, and especially in Colleen, we've had three major appraisers retire in the last year, and so appraisers appraisals are taking a long time here in this market, but. Um, what we get back is what's called a notice of value from that appraiser. And it tells us, you know, if you offered 300 and the appraiser says, yeah, it's worth 310, then you're good to go. If they say it's worth 290, uh, now you got to negotiate with the seller. And they might say, hey, I don't care. I still want that higher price, which is what we did with that home in, in Utah that we sold for 650. Um, we said, we don't care. I don't care if the appraisal doesn't come in. And we did the CMA and guess what that house had appraised for, or had the market value of that house was? 550, and we still sold it at 650. We just said, we don't care. Because we knew it was unique. It was a horse property with six stalls and somebody, a horse lover would want it. And that's who we got, was a gal that was a horse lover. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anyhow. She walk to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she so, she was so excited. <laughs> so the notice of value uh, is a VA term. It states the value of the property and the conditions so if there is something that needs to be fixed before the VA will guarantee that loan, then the, the seller is going to have to do that. So, all right, we're almost done. Loan officer gets the NOV, uh, ensures application is complete and sends it over to the final uh, approval with the underwriter. And then once you've got that accepted offer, it's probably going to be 15 to 45 days until closing. Again, the long pole in the tent there is usually the appraisal these days, at least with our company. Because we can get you, we can get what's called clear to close in 15 days, but that appraisal might not come in for 30 days. So, okay.
So yeah. it's dependent on the, the lender, the appraisal, uh, completion and your response time. time. If I'm working with you and I ask for a document, it takes you three, four, and five days, that's going to make things difficult. Okay? So when you're working with a lender, you just need, when they ask for something, you need to respond quickly. When the realtor asks for something, you need to respond quickly. Okay? So you go through closing, you'll do that at a co title company, and that's where everything gets transferred over to you. Sometimes they're doing it at homes now, but not with, with Oh, that's true. They finished. still come over and sign. Sometimes they'll bring it to your home or yeah. bring it to your place. That's when I come into. Yeah, yeah she's okay. a notary. So I'm a notary. Oh, you're a notary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Agent, Got so it. I will go to your house and close your yeah. door. Any questions? Sorry this took so long, but hopefully it's been thorough. Well, pretty much answered my question earlier that I asked about this. Did you learn anything? Got some head nodding there. Good. Yeah. I, right. I saw the wheels going about getting another house. Yeah. I like, oh, okay. I don't have to sell this. You definitely want to work with a property management company. You don't want to, I would say, unless you know contractors and electricians and roofers and stuff like that, you want to work with a company that's going to be keeping an eye on your property, and especially if you're out of the area. Home Vets Realty has a property management company. Um, and you just, um, if you, Meet with them and see what their prices are. There's other companies as well, but I've been impressed by Home Vets Realty. Yep. So. All righty. Well, then I guess what's left is to say thank you. And we appreciate your time today. Take a whole pizza with yeah. you because there's extra, obviously. Yeah. So I don't need to eat all that pizza. Three pizzas here. Feel free to take a pizza home with you. And, uh, and business cards. Oh. Can we give them any? Okay. Can you guys do a restroom? Yes. yes. So right, right there. Right down that hall. I was like, oh man, this is a long, long one. I don't know if I could. There'll be some. You brought cards, right? Yes. Okay. I got the 